schools to not be able to play this season. Now, on the other side of this, that does not mean that the bigger schools should not be playing. This whole thing with presidents getting involved and whatnot, like the ADs and the uh, conference commissioners, et cetera, had already been working through plans. They'd already been going through all of this. And these presidents, now, Chris, you went on a, a rant a little bit about them earlier, but they do not understand sports. They do not understand why it is so important for uh, college sports to happen, right? It is not just about money. Because a lot of these, the endowments at these schools are massive. We're talking billions upon billions of dollars, and the athletic budget is just a pinprick. However, it brings in so much more money, football does, as opposed to how much it actually spends out. It, I get it. They don't really look at it as anything that's that important, especially at some of these bigger campuses, right? Michigan, Ohio State, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, Ohio State is, what, like $7 billion dollars? For their academic endowment, I mean, it's absurd. Yes. And their athletic department budget is two hundred million somewhere around. I mean, it's just whatever. So it doesn't really matter to the president whether or not it happens. But it is a massive deal to those that are actually on campus. What they're not doing, what is actually best for the student athletes, they are doing what is best for them. And that is where, when you sum up all of this stuff, I heard Joel Clatt talk about it on Dan Patrick earlier today. I've heard other people talk about it as well. Liability. It is all about liability. So I don't think it is a coincidence that the Big Ten put out their schedule on Wednesday, and then after that, the NCAA announced that they couldn't do waivers, and now all of a sudden we're having this conversation about the idea of there not being a season. It's not like something happened with the virus over the weekend that made everybody change their plans. Nothing happened. The numbers actually went down. So nothing happened there. This is from uh, Ross Dellinger. Earlier today, about an hour ago, he tweeted, liability is such a big thing with CEOs. An administrator today told him, okay, we're going to play while other conferences back out. If a child dies on that field or gets seriously sick, it's all over. Your career is over. So Najee Harris, Alabama running back, told ESPN today that he would sign a waiver to not sue if he got COVID-19. And it, the whole idea is if there's actually momentum around the we want to play group to sign waivers, it could lessen the liability risk in the eyes of college presidents. But here's the thing. Like, if it's, a, if it's a deal where you just don't sue, that's a different kind of liability thing as opposed to a liability waiver of we're not going to cover your care. Like, that's a whole different deal. Yep. So if they change up the waivers, I have no problem with the waivers. Yep. We didn't like the way it was worded the first time, and that's why it became an issue. Uh, Chris, what, what are your thoughts here? No, I mean, yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't have any other thoughts. It's just, it, it's not about safety. It's about liability. It's about covering your ass. And that's all they're trying to do. And that's what's so funny about this. And I swear to God, there are 13 out of 14 big 10 schools that are actually going to have kids on campus. And for everybody that wants to tell me, well, they can socially distance and they can wear masks and they can da, 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 da. You're doing the same shit in the football department as you are anywhere else. Only in the football department, there's less people. You can keep the, the student athletes away from the rest of the general population on campus. Like, that is, it's just. You ever been ridiculous. to a cafeteria area at lunchtime on a college campus? Oh, my God, it's absurd. I, hell, I work on one. <laughs> I, I, but I, I'm just saying, like, yeah. you understand that, yes, okay, so, so let's say we're only going to have 27 kids in a class instead of 55, and so everybody is two desks apart and all this. That's, that's all great. At some point in time, everybody's going to go to lunch, though, right? Well, not, not just lunch. Hey, for, forget the lunch thing. Say they, say they shut down the student union. That's one thing. When you're walking in the halls to class, yeah. uh, how, how it, you've got one door to get into some of these classrooms. Even right. if you're these doing are, these hybrid. These are old buildings, and they're just, not, they're just not made like that. They're no, just, it makes no sense. I mean, it, yeah. along with that side of it, um, sports are back everywhere, and that's not just pro sports. We're not just looking at that. Youth sports are everywhere. In Indianapolis this past weekend, when I went a few weekends ago, there was an AAU tournament. There was another one this week. There's no testing. It's kids freaking everywhere. And yet they all understand the risks, and they go and do it anyway. Like, it's absolutely absurd. Um, the, the argument here, Nick Saban came out today, and they you know did a report on ESPN and da-da-da-da-da, and his point was, the real conversation should be whether or not we should be having school, not whether or not we should be having football. Like, why in the world did football become the argument? And I think I agree with him here. 
Like there is. Well, they no- don't want to cancel school because they got all them tuition dollars. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, and, and if you live on campus and you have a meal plan, uh, and we're gonna shut down the student unit, we're not giving you that money back. Yeah. I mean, it's we're just not give, we're not giving you that damn money back. Uh, Penn Michael State's not giving back the season ticket holder money. Yeah, which is absolutely absurd. Those fans, no, have, they're not giving a nickel. They These have schools been aren't through, giving you a penny back. Penn State has has had their fans the balls, have put up with so the balls much balls stuff. on those people, man. Woo! Yeah. Oh, it's hey. I, I'll go ahead and tell you this. Uh, I've got family members that are Alabama season ticket holders. If they tried that crap, I, I was told this weekend that they would never get another dime. From them the bo- and the a ton balls of that you have to have to tell your fans because I know the school is going through hard times. What do you think regular people are going through? Yes, season ticket they're not cheap. You want to just keep a couple thousand dollars of mine? I just, mean- <laughs> just now it's just a donation. Hang on, does it go to next year's season tickets? All right, I'm good with that. You yeah. can hold the money basically as a loan, you know, interest free, and I'll get next year's tickets. That's fine. Oh, no, it, you're just keeping it, and I got to repay everything again next year? That's a couple thousand dollars when everybody is tightening the belt right now. Yeah, I mean, it's insane. You're insane. The nuts on somebody to have to send out that letter. Oh, it's just oh, absolutely God. absurd. Um, so along with this, Michael jumps in on Twitch. He said, that's exactly right. If you can't afford it, uh, then I understand no football, but these Power 5 teams don't have the excuse. He said, there's liability every time these kids take the field. Give me a break. This is about the negative media and cancel culture calling for someone's job. I'm, I'm going to get there, I promise. Uh, Darren McArdle said, is, uh, is the Mac going to be a starter to cancellation, are they, or are they a loner? Well, right now, we don't know. Um, I, I would believe that they would be a loner. It might be a starter for the group of five schools, but it looks like it's a starter for the, the Big Ten. So, I mean, who knows? Damian Estrada jumps in. I think it's a smart thing the college is canceling the season. Because I don't think these student athletes should play during a pandemic if only the other sports leagues were smart. Okay. Uh, Michael said, we got a refund from the Broncos today. It was bittersweet. Um, and then Brad's crazy life jumps in. He said, I'm sorry the college teams are losing billions this year. Uh, Damien said, by the way, I don't think any of these sports leagues will last with or without a bubble. Soon that bubble will pop. Well, it's so far ahead in the NBA. And ahead in I'm going to tell you this. The bubble seems to be the way to go, by yeah, the way. Yeah, it really does. Not just the NBA. The NHL. NBA and the NHL. Ooh. You're talking goose egg on positive testing for for like a couple of weeks now. We're going into a month and nobody – it's because this disease is not magic. It can't float through walls, okay? Yeah. Yeah, I, it, it can't get know. there. It cannot get there. So the other side of this uh, with the presidents getting involved with the reason why it does not make sense, um, college, one, spring football ain't happening. Like uh, we, we talked – we kind of hit on this a little bit idea. earlier. But Some moron let, came up with that. Let's go ahead and, and dive in here and, and say, um, <laughs> Brad's Crazy Life said, could we do Atlanta and Indiana as hub cities? Uh, we, we're not doing a bubble for college football. <laughs> I, I wish. Listen, we can figure this thing out. It ain't that damn hard. I, hey, I wish, but I, I, don't think they can, I don't think they can technically do that. Um, but either way, I think they could do that for the NFL. But either way, um, with spring football, look, more than likely you would have to start practice in January. Right, because the semester ends in May. Like, there's you get into summer school and whatnot, and then you've got the kids that are going to the NFL. You got all the all of these things don't work on your time schedule. So you got to get to back to practice in January. Well, you're talking about trying to play football and trying to have camp and all that in the middle of flu season, right? And we're not going to have a vaccine ready in January. And if even if there is a vaccine, it's not going to be widely produced enough to where the college kids are going to be the ones to get it first. It's just not going to happen. My argument for the for moving it to the spring is the exact same as my argument for the SEC starting late. What's going to change? What what nothing. in the hell do you think is going to change between now and then? It, it, nothing. Like there's nothing that will change. I mean, it's just it's absurd. The the thought process behind okay. Well, let's do an eight-game schedule in the spring, and then we'll bring them all back over the summer for strength and conditioning. We'll just we'll forget about the spring football camps, and then we'll bring them back, and we'll have a full season in the fall. So let's say that you play a bowl game, and you've got your 12 regular season games next fall, which we don't even know if there's going to be a vaccine for next fall. So if they do decide to cancel college football this year, and we're not prepared for it again next year, are we going two years without college football for some of these kids. And not to mention the fact that we have no idea about the eligibility stuff and whether or not they're going to be able to come back to school, whether or not the schools are even going to pay for the scholarships because Wisconsin told all their spring athletes, 
Sorry, deuces. We ain't got the money to be able to pay for more scholarships, which is I bullshit. Just, I'm, but and I'm either sick way. of that. You know, you know how I feel about that. Uh, Listen, there was a day and a time where the railroad was trying to be built out in San Francisco. Okay, they were trying to build a railroad out west. All right, and the way the railroad paid these people instead of giving them real money, they gave them fake money to stores that the railroad owned. And the government said, mm, you can't do that. That's bullshit. But we do that to college students all day long. Yeah. We say, well, as long as you shop at the company store, then we're going to count all this as your income. Okay. We're going to call this you getting paid. That's bullshit, man. You can't do that. Yeah. But no, everybody, right. and here's the thing, that's not just a, everyone I talk to seems to think that the scholarship is a, a form of payment and it's cost, it doesn't cost the school money. I'm sure it has a cost fix to it, but it's not close to what that total is for tuition. And don't get me wrong on, on this side, like I, I am with Chris on that. I am also on the other side of. Yes, I do believe the kids get a pretty good value for coming to play football for the school. Like, I do think nah, the name, image, likeness there. stuff, I, I think the name, image, likeness stuff, they absolutely should be getting paid. And we'll figure you know, all that other stuff value, out later. Right. But either way, um, so the other side of this, if you decide to not have college football this fall, if, if all of the P5s decide this, this is going to be a massive issue for your income going forward. And the reason I say that is because they're going to put NFL on Saturdays. They're, and you think that they're going to want to go back to doing college football, which draws about a third of the number of, of the NFL games, if, if that? I mean, you're not going to be able to set it up. The NFL is going to get these days and figure out, oh, wait a minute. We can have even higher ratings. We can have a bigger national reach. And we don't really care what college does. I mean, they came out well, they and They already talk. make it clear they don't care what college does. Well, but they, they do at least forfeit the Saturdays to <laughs> college football. They've always given them Saturday. Correct. If they stop giving them Saturday, what does that mean for the yeah, crowd? Yeah, because these billionaires who own the NFL are also losing money because as our economy goes down, rising tide floats all boats. Well, yep. lowing tide loads all boats. You, you think it. the big rich cats want to stop being rich? No. Nope, they're going to make chance. up that money. Not a chance. That's a, one thing that that NFL thing is something I have not heard anybody else talk about. But once the NFL decides to start doing Saturdays, like they do it once the uh, college football season is over. As soon as the season's over with, they jump into Saturdays. They damn sure do, and because they know the value of that money. And it is a massive amount of viewership. It it helps out. No, and there's if you a don't reason. think ESPN or any of these other networks wouldn't take your school contract and. Punt it down the road <laughs> to get one NFL game. You're crazy. And you're the, just crazy. ESPN pays over a billion dollars a year for one game a week. That's it. One game a week, and it's the last pick game. Everybody else gets to draw, and they get one playoff game. Not one playoff game a weekend. And they have to simulcast one playoff it on game ABC. A wild card weekend, and it is the worst playoff game there. Yes. Uh, jumping back into the chat, Michael said, nothing's going to change enough from uh, from not till then. I don't know what he's saying. And he said, he's trying to say oh, nothing's well, going to change between now and the spring. He's yeah. agreeing with us. Uh, and then he said, oh, we'll have more data too. Uh, Matt Miller said, Nebraska's finally going to come home to their rightful place in the Big 12. Also, uh, who says a vaccine works? What That's the thing. We don't know yet. Uh, he said, this is also probably going to cause the super conference that people have always talked about. Brad's crazy life said, SEC needs to break away from the NCAA, get Texas, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Michigan, and let's get a season going. At, that's entirely, entirely possible. Now, before we dive onto, Can I be the president of that conference? Oh, that'd be a lot of fun, wouldn't it? I'd really like that job. And I'll do it for like a fraction of what y'all are paying these other blowhards. It, it really wouldn't be that and hard to do. I'll actually go to work. And when we have a pandemic, I'll actually start problem solving. Don't you know that it's got to be... Uh, it, it, we always talk about Mark Emmert and the NCAA and whatnot. But God. in a situation like this, he is really less than useless. Like, oh, yeah. he, he gets paid millions of dollars a year, and when it comes to something along these lines, he was asked today about it, and he said, well, really, it's up to each institution as to whether or not, not they want to play. It's not my responsibility. Like, what is not your damn responsibility? You know what? If I catch a college kid sleeping on a coach's couch, I am all over that shit, though. I promise you that. It's unbelievable. Just, Let me catch it. 
Just unbelievable. I'm not even talking about a nice couch in one of the head coaches. I'm talking about a couch on a shitty apartment in the middle of one of these campuses for a coach that makes like 50 grand a year. For those that don't know, we're talking about old 